Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is Walking in Between the Raindrops, and that's what we're doing today with a master alchemist. She's also a clinical hypnotist, and she's back. She's fantastic, and we're going to we're going to prove to you that everything is all right and is going to be all right. Debbie Unterman is back on the program. Debbie, how you doing? I'm doing well. And you, Stephen? I should call you Steve. My brother does not like to be called Stephen. <laughs> answer to almost anything. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, doing very well. I, you know, I, th I think we're determined today because we started weeks ago of your top 10 list or reasons why everything is going to be okay. Uh, just a positive look at things in our lives. I think we left off at number seven out of that top 10 list. We got to number seven, right? Number seven about trusting yourself hmm. and your intuition. And that's where we spent a long time about spirit, your connection to spirit. And your idea was that it is your intuition. And I would say, yeah, let's deep dive a little bit more into that just because we got interrupted with a caller and I wanted to say, yes, you are right. That, that small, still small voice of your intuition is, I would say, a part of God that is inside of all of us. I agree with you. And even as we were talking, I don't want to, we don't have to go back to it, but there were strange things that went on during that conversation <laughs> and connection with me and relatives that have passed over. I'm not making this up. It was uncanny, like these different signs that popped up during that conversation. Look back to the podcast. It's all real. But I do agree with you. There's things that are within us, call it intuition, call it spirit, call it God, if you believe in God, but you have to be able to hear it or see the signs of it. And I believe a lot of us don't because either we're dealing with things, stress, anxiety, life, the noise of life that's all around us that we're not interpreting those things, right? Noise of life and also believing this is getting into some religious beliefs, but a lot of people are taught that God is outside of us. Hmm. And I that really hurts. I never when thought that. That's why my number one is to go within. In fact, I, I got a good quote from uh, Carl Jung, who, of course, is the father of alchemy. Um, and the quote is, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. Process that. Not that there's anything wrong with dreams. Mm -hmm. But yeah. sometimes, you know, you can just dream. But why not make those dreams a reality? Why not make right. them alive? But your, right. your comment about God, spirit, whatever that may be, we, we think of that as being outside, not inside us. I totally got that. But I've never thought of that before. Yeah, you know, whatever you subscribe to, we don't, you know, don't need to get religious here. I am you are, we are, whatever, it doesn't matter. Well, I think there's a difference between religions which separate into individual religions with precepts and and spirit that just is. It, it doesn't, you don't have to have a belief. In fact, I remember the first time that um, I could say my first spiritual teacher told me I was spiritual and I said, how can I be if I don't know what that means? I was about 22 years old. Mm. <laughs> so we can even be spiritual without knowing what it means to be spiritual. It's true. And you could be 22, 52, 82, 82. <laughs> if you don't know what it means, it's not going to mean anything to see you. It's, it's, <laughs> and it's a goodness. It's a it's a goodness yeah. in us that that other people can pick up. It's in choices we make. And you said something about there being all that noise outside. And I took that to say that, yes, we also see God is outside of us. But what else is the noise is all those voices in our heads. That's noise. We have constant conversation. They say we think 65,000 thoughts a day. 
And most of those thoughts repeat every day, the same thoughts. And a lot of the thoughts are negative thoughts. What we can't do, what's wrong with us. And that's part of, you know, okay, so remember, uh, it seems like we're going through the steps. That first one was go within. The next one was face it. And we sometimes just have to face reality, what is, and make peace with the noise inside of us and and come to terms with who we are. And as we as we go up these steps, we're, you know, we find out we're perfect just the way we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because what what can we do? I mean, we can have personality flaws, yes. And we can heal, we can go into therapy and we can learn to be better people, but we have to face that too. Nobody can drag you to therapy kicking and screaming. If they do, it's not going to work. I find that for sure. When someone refers someone to me, uh, I dread those. That's probably not going to work. <laughs> and I bet you know it as soon as you even. Yeah. Um, I try to disqualify people on the phone and say this work isn't for everybody. And can I talk to the person that you're sending me? So they know what they're getting into. I'd rather not even start if they're not willing to start looking at themselves. It's really important. It that brings us. What was that? That's on number three, right on the list. Number, yeah. That well, the next would be feel your feelings. And what keeps people from wanting to deep dive is they don't want to feel uncomfortable feelings. They would rather just you know, fake it till they make it sometimes, just pretend to be okay. Um, Do you think the, maybe when when people are dealing with situations, challenges, what, however you want to call it, do you think after a while they become numb? And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a self-protection mode where it's just, I'm not going to let it bother me, let it roll off me. But after a while... And we talk about everything is habit after a while. I'm not saying that's a good habit or a bad habit. Maybe there's a place for that, but it's just a kind of a numbness, just kind of going through. Not, you're not going to rock my world. You know, the good things are going to be okay. The bad things are going to be okay. Kind of like writing like that. Do you find sometimes that's, that, that people are like that when they're dealing with something and that's why they don't feel their feelings? Well, what makes them numb? Sometimes they, they use something to numb themselves. Or sometimes they they might be numb because of bad feelings they don't want to feel and they, yeah. they make themselves. But other people can become idiots. They can become obnoxious assholes. Yeah. You know, not everybody goes numb. Yeah. And that, and that what it what is that? If somebody's like that, what are they doing? They're acting out. They're acting They're out. They're acting out. And They're that's acting. why it's really important when you feel your feelings to go back to the first time you felt something. Hmm. I had an interesting session with, with someone, a first time client the other day. Um, and she felt like it's my job as I do an intake to come to the bottom line of what is a person really going through because they start just telling you their story. And one of the, the big hmm. stories inside of her that she was hanging on to was from, I think it was last Christmas. I think, you know, here with holidays coming up again, I think this was going back to last year. Um, I don't think it was just this past Thanksgiving. I think we were a whole year when uh, she drove all the way from Atlanta, where I am, to New Jersey, around where you are, so, you know, up there. It's a long drive. It's It's a schlep to get up there. She's staying with her mother. They're going to have the big Christmas at her sister's. She's been going to the, um, I think, um, what's it called? Wet yoga, um, Bikram yoga or something, you know, uh, with her sister. And now we get into the vaccinations. I don't want to get into that here today. I just want to tell you what happened with her mm -hmm. is that she is unvaccinated. Her sister was okay doing the yoga with her. But when it came to Christmas Day at her house, she decided on Christmas Day, when this person is staying with her mother, she says, you're you're not invited. 
you're uninvited to Christmas. She came all the way up to be with her family. And she said, you know, her sister tells her, if you can't get a test today, and it was a five hour line, and she had just been tested the day before, that you're not invited. So, you know, what what do I do? I can't get into a political discussion about this. But it was a feeling of being kind of blindsided. Um, so I, I have to go back to when's the first time that you were blindsided? Because these things do not come up in your life once. Can They're I ask patterns. You, before we jump into the or continue that situation, when we say blindsided, are you referring to blindsided in that relative situation or blindsided? Yes. Okay. I didn't, I, yes. I, I was trying to, to determine whether it was in any situation where you get a surprise, like what, are you kidding? Well, it it was happening to her uh, another time recently with an art show she was doing. And the, the woman who was running the art show um, said, I'll take this painting, very expensive painting. So of course it couldn't be sold at the show. And then after the show was over, the woman who owned the center decided, nah, I'm not going to buy it. Now that's a blind side, right? Uh, and yeah. a betrayal. And so these are happening. So we, we're having a pattern, right? So what I do in alchemy, because it's what's called functional medicine now. I don't know if you've heard that term, but that means always going to the root of the issue. You know, thank you for clarifying that because I've heard that term a million yes. times, but never, and I, I never would connect it to alchemy. So thank you. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because it can be in herbology or, you know, getting to the bottom, like it could be your gut, you know, so functional medicine goes across the board, but I'm using functional medicine in the subconscious mind, getting to the root of the issue. Because otherwise, like I say about hypnotic suggestions, they're kind of like mowing the weeds down. You know, they're gone until they grow again. And I'm pulling them out mm. by the root. So we go back to what? when was the first time that she, I also saw it kind of as having the rug pulled out from under her or being blindsided. So, you know, that that was the issue we were dealing with. And she went to when she was a little kid um, on her way from New Jersey, now back down to the, the Florida, Georgia area for a vacation. And her grandfather had a private plane and she was hoping she'd get to be in it to get there a little earlier instead of having to drive down with the family. But her sister, her older sister gets the seat on the plane and she finds out publicly, you know, her mother doesn't say something very like, soften the blow like okay you're not going to get to go in the plane but you are you know we'll we'll do something fun for you we'll get you extra christmas presents or something again it's at christmas time it, you know these matching issues this is how it works so we go back to that and she has to deal with the seven-year-old who had that disappointment and who was it the same sister <laughs> that got the ride in the plane you know you can't make this stuff up wow <laughs> So we we deal with that and we do what we call running and changing incidences, which is how the brain works. This is what they're finding out in the new brain science that's just coming. Like this work I'm doing is four decades old. That's way before neuroplasticity was even a thought in someone's head because scientists change their minds about things. You know, we saw it with the vaccine you do go with masks and all that you know science is always changing it's a moving there's target. new evidence and and they change you know what the science is i mean president lincoln when he was shot they didn't know you can't stick your hand inside of him to find the bullet in the wound and they killed him because they didn't know about bacteria because it hadn't been discovered yet 150 years ago you know so science is always changing so in what they have discovered though is this is the place in the brain where think of a, a computer program. You you write something and you don't even have to be a computer programmer. You know, these days I, I used to do DOS a little bit. It was more complicated, but you know that Same. you write something on Word, you write a you know something, and then and you save it. And then you go, wait a minute, I want to change it. And you go back to the file, open it up again, write new words and save it. That's the way the brain works. You have to go to the file. I mean, 
again, if human beings are so smart that they can create computers, isn't the one that created the brain, the biggest computer in the world, smarter than any computer programmer? So shouldn't it work the same way as above, so below? So that's what we do. We go to the program. So we find out at seven years old, this idea of it's not fair, you know, having the rug pulled out from her and, and being disappointed. You know, we go to the original time and then we change it and we make it that her mother does pull her aside and they do get to go shopping for some clogs. I think it was she wanted, you know, or something, something special that she could get down there in a car instead of in a plane and at least say, nah, 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 I got some presents, you know, like a little kid would want to do. So now we're back to the present because here we have to see when else have you been blindsided? And so we're back at Christmas. So what can I do? So this is me as a master alchemist. I have to come up with ideas and reframes. And so I'm hearing her say, because we do some, what you would think of as gestalt, you know, you speak and instead of someone getting into another chair, pretending there's someone else and speaking in conscious mind, we do it all in the subconscious. So now imagine you're your sister and you're speaking back to you. And she's saying, I don't feel safe with you in the house unvaccinated. And so I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm, you know, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do. And then I come up with the brilliance, the idea that, wait a minute, they both have the same desire to be safe. And I'm able to show her in her subconscious mind. Because if I was just having a conversation with her, like I was in pre-induction interview, you know, just talking to her in her rational mind, that part of the brain. And I just said to her, well, look, you and your sister and brother-in-law all just wanted to be safe. She would stay in her position and it wouldn't sink in and she wouldn't, it wouldn't be healing because it's in the wrong part of the brain where you can just fight back. But when you're deeper in that place, in the subconscious, in the limbic system where the amygdala is, where the emotions lie, where the hippocampus is, where the memories lie, then you can shift an idea and it can be accepted because the subconscious mind is in a receptive state instead of a state of, you know, I'm going to fight you on it. And so I let that sink in and she goes, it was an impasse. I needed to feel safe by not having a vaccination and they needed to feel safe by not have some, having somebody unvaccinated in their house. We were the same. We are family. I still love them. It wasn't, they weren't trying to be mean to me. And that was the healing. Wow. Were they, were they, no, I don't know if we, we talked about that, but were they mean to her? Or well, they, she felt, yeah, I mean, they kicked, they wouldn't let her come to Christmas. She had to stay at her mother's house while her whole family was together. That's, that's an they, exclusion. They that, never did that they never that said hurts. That. That that was just a she found that out basically as she's on her way that day yeah that day yeah yeah but you know what's it, interesting Debbie the way the mind works it keeps score so yes that blindsided situation we had the plain blindsided situation we right other situations they're all unrelated maybe a few are family connected but it could have been. I lost a job I got blindsided there's another one put that one on the list of all these surprises. And it of course, weighs you down. Of course. And what I say is, we, you know, although we still had the art dealer thing that we had to do. And, you know, so she was able to see that, oh, but at least I got the chance to come to a new city and have an art show and get a nice video of everything up on the wall. And I could put it on my resume. So she was able to come to terms with that, too. And I, I saw her since then, and she's feeling much better. But what I say is, um, it's kind of like if you're a kid and you're playing dominoes and you put the dominoes all up like this and then you knock one down and it doesn't always knock all of them down. You know, sometimes it'll just go that far and then you have to hit it again and it'll knock the rest down. That's what doing one incident like that equals. 
it knocks a bunch of things out. You don't have to go back to every single time. Oh, so you're saying one session, one, one session, one incident on a, uh, on an emotional issue, gotcha. like being blindsided, having the rug pulled out from you can knock a lot of those out. I don't have to have somebody come back and talk about every single time. Right. You know, I'm curious, yes. does this happen, Debbie, when let's say in this situation, you're dealing with somebody who like this woman, she got blindsided while you're doing a session, do other things come up? And you're able to knock those down at the same time without even planning on it. Yeah, often, okay. often it's one thing leads to another. And that's, that's how I trace it. That's my job in a session. That's why it's hard to explain it. That's why it's so individual. You know, I see people doing, I've, I've been in a little uh, free Facebook thing, you know, like a five day challenge about belief systems Yep. And this guy, this very famous rich guy is trying to say that it's all just change your mind, just redecide this decision. But the thing is, that's completely ignoring this other part of the brain and saying you can think yourself out of a decision that you make. And he even admits that you're making most of your decisions before you're seven years old. What he's not saying is that's when the brain is open you are pure subconscious mind. You have no mm -hmm. prefrontal cortex yet. It isn't developed. There's no, You're not thinking. no boundaries. It's it's wide open. You believe it, it is wide open. And it's so to change those, you need to go back to that child who was in the situation. So again, we're dealing with the seven-year-old. We're rescuing her. I yeah. use stuffed animals for people to hold to, you know, make that little girl feel better about it. And then you're really eliminating instead of just pushing through and making a decision that I, I'm not as afraid of ghosts. I'm not afraid of ghosts. I'm not afraid of ghosts. You know, whatever it is that, you know, you're willing yourself to it. It's just gone. Well, essentially what you're talking about is going back to the word program and you're opening up that file that you created when you were, let's say six. And that was whatever phobia it was. Uh, or I'm not good enough or whatever it is. And now you're going to write, I am good enough. Hit save, close the file, and then move on. Yep. Wow. And, and that's where it works when you get to that part of the brain, the middle brain. And one day I'll talk about the triune brain because we also have the reptilian brain, the lower brain. That's where which, which is the a thing lot that of fears. To, right. The, the thing that wants to save you, you know, that that's the... Yeah. You understand it? Reptilian. Always keep you safe. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And and, and one day, is. one day, Debbie, we're going to get to this top 10 list. <laughs> That's not going to be today. It's not good. It's not, we're, we're recapping here, but we, yeah. And which, okay. Which is great because we're giving really good <laughs> background in each of these. I think that was number four and we're number five and we have like. Deep dives. Yeah. I, I think we, we did like one, two, three, um, maybe maybe four, which was the forgive yourself. I don't, oh, you know what? I, I'll just say one thing. I did hear uh, Will Smith talk about the slap. You may have seen that go around. And, yeah. and he, used, he used the term that we have spoken about with the forgive yourself, which is number four. Mm. And what he said was, I had to forgive myself for being human, for having an ugly moment. I mean, because he can't take it back. And I love that he said he had to forgive himself for being human. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes into yeah. accepting yourself and forgiving yourself. And accepting yourself will be coming up as number eight. So we touched on that too. <laughs> you know what? And that's going to, that's, we could probably do an entire session on that because <laughs> forgiving yourself and others is so important therapeutic it's oh we've done a couple of those we gotta get past that yeah <laughs> we've done that <laughs> right, everybody please forgive us for not getting to the entire top 10 today it's just you know what interesting insight and i think you nailed it in in my brain and and i think everybody else in the word document analogy where that file was created when you were a kid we just have to rewrite that file word document we're not rewriting you know it it could be even a computer program, but for simplicity, we're talking about that document, <clears throat> leaving it. And Which cleaning. lives in the middle brain. Yes. It doesn't live in the temporary storage of our 
you know, our working brain. It's deep storage. That's why I do the subconscious work. Of course. Where you have to go within. That's yeah. that's alchemy. Yeah, and that's fascinating. If somebody wants to to reach out to you and and really start the process, website is gobeyondbeliefs.com, right? Yes. And they can also call me 770-434-7488. I am in Atlanta. I realized we had a caller from Atlanta and I forgot to tell her, oh, I'm in Atlanta too. <laughs> that I was even, a net. I didn't even put that together. <laughs> that was a net with your mother's middle name. <laughs> oh, that, yes, that was that woman that called. Yeah, that's and a, I forgot to say, oh, I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> You know what? The the Annette thing just blew me away. And, uh, you know, not to digress here at all, but I was in an office the other day, a uh, medical office for my daughter. And I think I shared with you, she had some challenges and her doctor's name had my mother's first and last name. This is a completely separate office, completely separate. Wow. Situation. I look up on the wall and there's the name Rose three times. And I said to the, the nurse sitting at the desk, I'm like, I'm just, you know, and she even said, things don't, things don't happen by coincidence. That was our theme. And I said, well, based on that, that name up there. And she goes, yeah, that, that, that's, that's Rose. That's her, this is her office. I'm using it today. <laughs> Where's that? How does that happen? But anyway, um, your mom, I think your mom likes me. She keeps coming through I, when you're with me. Where, I'm, 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 I'm going to connect the dots one day. There's a, there's a and yeah. we're going to finish that top 10 list one day. I'm convinced that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. All right, Debbie, always great having you on gobeyondbeliefs.com. And you too. Uh, looking forward next time we talk. Great uh, seeing you again, uh, Steve. You we'll talk soon and we'll be All ready. right. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.